Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Friday. Okay guys, so we're back to talk about Alex Baskin, Tom and Rachel, and also um, this cop calling situation. We have a lot to discuss, lots to talk about, but before we jump in, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. What else was I gonna say? I think that we covered it. By the way, guys, we've had a very successful week. I want to say before we jump into this, thank you to everyone who joined us for Hot Messy Topics. Thank you to everyone who joined us for the Vanderpump Rules After Party, the Vanderpump Rules Recap, Hot Messy Topics on Monday. Like, it's just been go, 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 until you can't. That's how I live in my life. So that's this is where we're at. Let's just get into it. Shut up, Adam. <laughs> Okay, guys, so there is an executive producer who is now explaining why he wishes Scannaball never happened. Um, Vander Pump Rules executive producer, but also that and Rachel exposing the fact that Tom Sandoval was calling her selfish for seeking treatment, which does that surprise me? No. Also, Ariana Maddox threatening to call the cops on Tom Sandoval. We're about to break into all of it. Let's start with Alex Baskin, shall we? Now, thank you to realitytea.com. It is no secret that Vanderpump Rules was on shaky ground after season nine aired, but Bravo gifted the show a 10th season, hoping that Pump Rules could recapture the magic. Well, season 10 brought us Scandaball, thanks to Tom Sandoval and Rachel Levis and their affair, but cameras picked back up to record the cast reactions, and this was around the season 10 reunion. So if Scannaball increased ratings and gave the show two Emmy nominations, why would executive producer Alex Baskin wish the scandal never happened? So Alex was a guest on Vanderpump Rules star Lala Kent's podcast, Give Them Lala. Lala went there and she asked Alex why he called Scannaball the worst thing that ever happened to the show. He said, contrary to what certain people in certain quarters have said of the controversy saving the show, the truth is, is we're making a great show. We were making a great show in season 10. In fact, we had made a great season it was a bounce back season and the audience was into it yes season 10 was an improvement and had some of the old school vanderpump rules vibe but to say that skin wasn't the cherry on top is a little bit odd i felt like there is a danger in burning too fast and too brightly i also thought that is the one thing to happen to this group that has threatened to tear everyone apart everything else has been something that we were able to overcome and i didn't know that we could put the pieces back together had obviously the moments of Scandaball never happened again. So he said he found it weird. My opinion could change. And there were other things that have come out of it, like the Valley. It may or may not have happened if there wasn't that momentum. Things change in unexpected ways, but that is the way for a while that I felt. And that is still my analysis interesting you know like i guess you don't always look at it from all perspectives but when he's saying you know things sometimes burn too bright and you know like too fast too bright all of these things it's like well that's a wild perspective i didn't really think about that but as an executive producer i guess that's a really good valid point so i have my cat trying to jump on me right now Okay, moving on. Listen to this shit. Tom Sandoval allegedly called Rachel Levis selfish for a trauma therapy stay. So now we have Rachel, who obviously decided not to come back to the show, and with good reason. Instead of letting Bravo edit her narrative on camera, she chosen to go on the podcast route. That was her good reason. I think it was stupid. On her podcast, Rachel Goes Rogue, she has focused on the details of her experience during and after the affair, and in her most recent episode, she got candid about the dark side of Tom's alleged narcissistic behavior, most notably when she checked herself into a therapy center after the news broke of their affair. Hmm. Hmm. She said, if I didn't reach out to him one or two days, he would be upset by it and really kind of take out the frustration on me. So it made me feel like I had a responsibility to maintain his emotional needs. 
She also said, and oh man, the number of times that Tom called me selfish while I was in the meadows and said I was running away from my problems and I'm depending on this place that's basically an assisted living facility. You know, like really guilt tripping me and saying that I left him to deal with all of this fodder. I'm just running. She said, you know, that just reveals the type of person he is. And there's no question that Tom and I will never, ever, ever be friends again. So as if it wasn't reason enough, Sandoval's recent appearance on the podcast Biofiles certainly sealed the deal when he described Rachel as somebody who's in her 20s, like doing essentially the fucking whipped cream fucking bikini thing like in Varsity Blues and said, Rachel, oh. Well, Rachel said, I hated what he said comparing me to Darcy Sears and Varsity Blues. I was like, what is this reference? And I YouTubed it and I was like, my gosh, like what? The way that he was describing it really made it sound like I was the temptress and that it was like the seduction that he fell into. I can take ownership of my part in that because, yeah, it was a choice that we made every day and it was a really bad decision but they still continued to make it. But also, no, he does seem to have this like thing about him. Say hi to Mayday, everyone. He does seem to have this thing about him where he is just constantly... You got the camera time. That's what you wanted. Okay. Thanks. Grandma wrinkles over here. Um, <laughs> narcissist. Not accepting any of the responsibility. I feel like this is a theme for him. Oh, wait. It keeps going. So with the premiere of Vanderpump Rules Season 11, tensions obviously are super high between Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval, with the two of them still living in the same house after all. Now, the living situation is complicated, and Season 11 has promised a great deal of turmoil still yet to come. Of course, in a situation like theirs, having to live as exes with one ex guilty of an affair, even the smallest of offenses could come with turmoil. Either one would be ready to escalate things to the next level, and escalations are likely to come. Case in point, Tom's plan for his birthday. On January 30th, Bravo dropped a teaser for Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 2, wherein Tom explained to his assistant, Anne, that he wanted to host a birthday party at the house. Anne showed clear hesitation due to Ariana, and Tom suggested that Ariana could come if she wanted. If not, they could put her up in a hotel. Now, Poor Anne had to actually confront Ariana when she came downstairs. To her credit, Ariana listened very patiently and tried to be as polite as possible. And when Anne suggested a hotel room, Ariana responded, uh, that's not happening. I think that's very disrespectful and inappropriate. If he wants to have a party, he can have it somewhere else. Ariana also said, if there are people here making noise, I will call the cops. And Anne understood and thanked Ariana for her response, which made us feel so bad for her. But Ariana had a point. Tom could hold the party elsewhere. The choice to do it in the house felt like a power play on his part, and a lot of people were not happy with this. I think that it was his way to sort of flex and exercise his position, and it just looked dumb. But he looks dumb to me, and I can't help that. I wonder if one day I'm going to regret these words. No, nope, I feel pretty good about it. So guys, I want to hear what your <laughs> I want to hear what your thoughts are. Go ahead and smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and also don't forget that we have a lot of lives coming up in the next week or so. Um well, every single week we have recaps and after parties now, all kinds of things and also the podcast. So check them all out. We're getting into Saturday and Sunday and I think it's time to just like Take a breath, sit back, enjoy the weekend, do something for yourself, make some memories and be safe. Bye guys. Love you.